We bring greetings, our peace of love, and our blessings unto each of you. This is the Queen Mother Curtain. It is a beautiful honor to come to each of you this evening. It has been a while, but we are blessed. I had a few things that I wanted to speak about uh, in this address. Um, some of the things are different emails that I received from different uh, persons and some of those are concerns that was voiced to me and I like to answer the questions that are set before me and I like to answer them in the public domain um, to give an answer um, to whatever I can answer. There are some things I cannot answer um, at one time, I, I cannot answer immediate. Um, some things that uh, ask on me, they are asked in different parts, so I have to answer them in parts um, in order to get a deeper understanding of what you are asking sometimes. It takes a um, deeper answer to the question other than just giving something quick and fast. Uh, so at this moment I'm going to address a few things um, that was said before me. Um, one of the things is I want to talk about something that is very important to me. I am true to being who I am. Yes, I am indeed a queen mother. I have my papers and everything, but I am yet going to be who I am. And I refuse to change, uh, to try to fit in to the box that a queen mother should fit into. I am going to always uh, stand for the causes that I begin with. I sent a letter about a month ago to my management office. I have a management office that manages me and they pretty much can tell me what to do and where to live and where to go and even how to conduct myself. I sent a letter to them about a month ago and I told them that if I have to fit into the box uh, to say and do things just to fit in uh, with the rest of society, I would step down from my position before I live like that and before I be a prisoner of who I am. Uh, they sent a letter back to me stating that that's not what they wanted. And I sent another letter to them again on the same subject, letting them know that I do have certain beliefs, uh, I believe in certain things, certain causes I have picked up, and I'm not going to stop, I'm not going to lay them down. Uh, I would uh, do those things to the day that I took my very last breath. And they sent the letter back to me, and at that point I was given more freedom. I was given more freedom to speak on a lot of subjects that Queen Mothers are not allowed to speak on. And I would like to say to Sky Management and to Dante De Hiss and to Mr. Youngblood, I am so grateful for your respect towards me, knowing that I do respect and I love people, and everything I say and do will be in the best interest of people. And I am so grateful for that. So with those things being said, I would like to say one of the things, the subjects I would like to talk on, I was asked about, is women causes. As everyone that knows me, uh, women causes have always been um, at the front of the line as far as my uh, purpose in life and the things that I want to do. Women and girls, I have always um, worked towards the goal of helping them and uh, being a support system. And that's not going to change. Uh, someone asked me, uh, they had noticed that I, I was beginning to do uh, a few other things. There was a few other uh, causes and things that I had um, picked up. And I began to do those things. So someone sent me an email saying, Queen Mother, are you going to uh, continue to work with the women and the young girls? We come to depend on you. And uh, we hope that so so many other causes you have picked up have not uh, hindered that. And I would like to just say nothing but death is going to stop me from working uh, to make a difference in the lives of um, young girls and children everywhere. 
we are scheduled to be headed into the um, United Nations on different causes coming up this year. We're going to be traveling to a few places. Um, so nothing, there is absolutely nothing but death that's going to stop me um, from working against abuse on women and girls, uh, rape and child molestation is a cause that I would be uh, involved in for the rest of my life. Uh, no matter what new thing that you see me maybe helping someone with or helping some certain kind of organizations, um, no matter what I do, that is something that I'm never going to stop doing. That would always be my cause. So the answer to that is yes, I'm going to continue to work on the uh, projects that we have with the women and girls, the rape victims, uh, child molestation, and uh, we're going to always um, play our, a, a heavy part in that. And I'm going to always put my money on that. My money is going to always be to help women um, in their cause to build their lives and to be stronger for the communities. Um, the other thing I have already spoke to you on uh, speaking my beliefs. Someone said, Queen Mother, we noticed that uh, lately I have been coming out and I've been more forceful and I've been speaking more loudly and clearly even on the Facebook and the public domains on my beliefs on a lot of subjects. And that is because my management company have decided to give me more freedom to be able to do that. And I'm glad that they decided to do that because had they not, I was going to do it anyway. Uh, because I believe, when I believe in something, I believe in it. There is not a cause that I don't take up, that I don't respect and believe in. So I, you know, someone sent me a letter that made me think about two or three months ago. They sent me a letter and they stated that I fight for women cause, but yet I have a management company that tells me what I can and cannot say. And they made all the sense in the world, and I totally agree with them, that this is a issue and a problem that's been with women for so long. We have been told to keep quiet. Uh, if we have an opinion or a belief on something, we are told that we're not ladylike if we uh, speak up for that cause. And I totally agree uh, with what the person had to say that if I am uh, taking up the cause so women can have freedom to speak up and to have an opinion and to live accordingly to the way they think that they should live, then I myself must be an example of that. Uh, the other thing is I've already spoke to you about the rules and regulations concerning my management company. I do have um, a management company. I have a security company. I have received a lot of inbox uh, invitations. If I do not come to your program, if I believe in it, I will yet support it. Uh, as I stated, my management team, Sky Management, uh, they pretty much can tell me which appointments I can go to and which ones I cannot. So. I think um, in the best interest of security and a few other things, uh, I would allow them to keep that authority. So that is the reason why if you have sent me invitations to come someplace to some of your meetings, and if I, if I cannot come, uh, it is because I pass the information along to the um, persons that I should give that information to and that they have come to the conclusion that maybe I should not go. So I wanted to uh, simply explain that. Um, the next thing I wanted to talk about was the community services and the work that we do for the villages. We love the villages in Africa. We love the villages in Asia. We take care of over 31 villages in Africa and 19 villages in Asia. And I want to say this, it costs a vast amount of money to do so. Let me explain this very clearly because a lot of people seem to have the wrong idea. We are a welfare program for these villages 
and for these different uh, foundations and organizations. What that simply means, that means that we don't give them uh, uh, a big lump sum of money. Instead, we put them on a welfare system program that money comes in every three to four weeks. Now, we do have a few villages in Asia that get um, their funds every two weeks. Uh, we go according to the location, the area, and the need and the size of the villages. So a lot of times people look for uh, different programs or maybe federations to uh, send the money, give them a big lump sum of money, you know, give me two or three thousand dollars at one lump sum. We uh, have done that under certain circumstances, but normally what we do is we put the foundation and we put these organizations and the villages in certain communities, we put them on a particular program where money comes in to them every three to four weeks. They, get a, they receive funds, they receive money, and the reason we do that is because it is not going to refound uh, in our work that is, is more helpful to have income coming in on a regular basis, you know, better than just having a thousand dollars or two thousand dollars at one time. So we are a system, uh, if you will, call it a welfare system, where this is how we support uh, different foundations and different organizations. We put them on a system where they can be constantly on a regular basis, and the money is always there. They can constantly receive this. So we feel it's more helpful that that way they have steady income coming in on a regular basis without worrying about where we ran out and that's all that they're going to give us. So um, I wanted to explain that to you. Um, the next thing we want to talk about is um, I noticed something very interesting that I had received. I received over 100 and something emails on this subject and I want to very briefly hit on it. Uh, some people were talking to me about the conditions that is in Ferguson, I believe it's called Ferguson, Masui, and the U.S. of A. Um, excuse me if I cannot uh, say it uh, <laughs> in English too well, but in Ferguson, I wanted to say this because it, it came to my attention and I was asked over a hundred something times through email about it. I, it is my understanding that in Ferguson, they have 69 to 70 percent African Americans and only 29 to 30 percent is Caucasians. Now I am going to say this loud and clear. If you have a problem with the prosecutor of Ferguson, why have he been in office since 1991 when his office is an office that is voted on? If you have 69 to 70 percent of the population in your community and you are not happy with the prosecutor or you are not happy with the way things are going and you feel uh, racism is an issue, why? Are you not voting this man, this person, whoever they may be, out of office? So I, I want to say this. I have a lot of respect for Mrs. Rita Harden, her and her husband, and the work that they are doing in Atlanta, Georgia, because they are educating young people. They are educating them on what it means to get involved in your community, what it means to have a voice. They don't tell you that you have to vote one way or another. They don't say vote Republican or vote Democrat, but they educate you on getting engaged in the process and understanding what it is. They engage you on the civil matters, which is very important to be educated on civil matters. I find a vast amount 
of our youth are not educated on civil matters. And I, I, I want to say so much, so much has been put into the Community Advocate Program by Mrs. Rita Harden and her husband, and I greatly respect your work and what it is that you are doing. I have, I have people that is somewhat over here to my right clapping their hands, but we, <laughs> but we do appreciate it because when you see what is going on in Fregasa, uh, those things should not be happening. You should not have someone in office that is voted in since 1991, and this is 2014. Uh, that means that you are not exercising the rights that you already have. Sometimes we want new rights, but we're not exercising the ones that we do have. And sometimes in the African American communities, they don't have very many rights, but you better take advantage of the ones that you do. So I was asked to speak on that, and I wanted to uh, briefly do so. Um, it is important to keep in mind, and I ask each person each time I speak to please get involved in your community. There is a woman somewhere that is suffering. There is someone that is hurting. There is a child that is being raped, beat, molested, or abused. And if you turn away, who would help them? And if you don't reach out to them, think about it. Who's going to do it? I think about that when I get up in the morning. I think about that when I lay down at night. That I have a responsibility. That I am obligated to the cause. And I ask you to please, whatever it is that must be done, doesn't matter if you're not working with me or not, doesn't matter. Work with someone in your community that is doing something to make a difference in the lives of peoples everywhere. Thank you so very much. Salam.